What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my catch-up episode for two weeks worth of content. So with the holiday weekend, last weekend in the United States, and just general timing with life and work, I didn't have a chance to finish as much as I wanted, get an episode recorded and all of that stuff. So I thought it actually kind of worked out a little bit better because it not only gave me time to finish up the Star Trek Deep Space Nine Dominion arc, but also catch up on a Star Trek movie, uh, prepare a little bit of extra content, and then also catch up on some uh, planning for the next special episode coming out soon after this episode. So I'll get to that at the end of this episode, but to start off with this episode to get through all the content for this week, um, like I mentioned, I did have a chance to finally finish watching all the um, Dominion War specific episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. So it's the latter half of season six and for the most part, all of season seven. And overall, I wanna say that it was a pretty good story arc. I actually would have wanted a little bit more, I don't know, maybe more battles or something like that. For some reason, it just felt like something was missing, but what they did really well overall was the interconnected stories, the relationships, the conflicts, the stress of battle and all of that. So, um, for example, with the Cardassian and um, Dominion Alliance, you have their um, continuing friction and you have, you know, Golda Kot being doing his own thing, um, ultimately looking like a Bajoran to get closer to the pirates and all of that, which I thought was an intriguing arc. Um, the stress of battles for the uh, Federation, their continuing relationship with the Klingons, of which I liked that uh, Worf was given his own house and dealing with uh, or he helping the, um, the, his general friend become the new chancellor. So all of that side stuff had a lot of focus and that actually helped improve a lot of that story. So even though the battles were on the lower side, it made the battles that much more interesting. To, which, to the point where I was like, maybe that all those battles were probably costly to make, but I did um, appreciate all the different Federation starships going into battle, seeing, you know, the Romulan ships, and I want to say there might have been a Klingon Bird of Prey, but some they look really close, or between the Klingon Bird of Prey and the Romulan ships, they look really similar, except for certain aspects. Um, and then just the whole thing with the wormhole uh, fall being blown or being shut down and then reopened and all of that. So all the time that was spent to develop all those um, side stories worked well um, on the whole. So I definitely recommend watching it. So like I said, you don't necessarily have to watch every single Deep Space Nine episode, but you know, select episodes from the Gem Hadar in the early in season, I think one or two, and then going into you know seasons five through seven, pretty much covers all of that. So definitely worth watching. And then of course things like having the loss of Jadzia Dax, and then um, bringing on Ezri, I think it's Ezri Dax, um, was nice because that dealt with the personal relationship of. Um, Jedzia, Dax, and Worf, so I liked that as well. So overall, I rec like I said, I recommend watching it. It was a good story arc. I can finally knock that off of my bucket list and um, say that it was a good um, story arc and kind of hope we see more of that. Saying, of course, or to the point where I don't know how much other times we deal with the Dominion and other Star Trek properties, but overall it was very well done and I liked it. Um, so with that being said, um, since I had my um, Paramount Plus um, subscription active, I also decided to give Star Trek Nemesis a watch, mostly because I didn't really remember much beyond the early scenes up until the point where um, Picard and the landing party first meet um, Praetor or Shinzon. But watching it now, I actually 
realized that I did remember a lot more than I thought because they found um, B4 and then all the stuff that about talking to him, having data put his uh, memory put his memories into B4 to see how he would handle it. So it's almost like with B4, I actually like that that was a prototype, like an earlier version, but that was kind of like the fur, the fun data and then uh, Lore is the evil version and then Data was the early version and actually balancing the two by taking out the emotion ship and then the version we get in Picard season three was a version of all three so um, I liked all of that and then the whole sacrifice thing at the end for the loss of Data I totally had forgotten all about that or don't remember having seen that so um, overall good I liked the battle sequences the fight um, to the point where a lot of it felt on par with, um, I want to say it's almost like Star Trek First Contact. So the battles with the Borg, and then here with the battles between Picard and the Enterprise and the Romulans was very well done. So overall a good movie. I don't know if it's overrated or underrated, but it was a good movie. I like the visuals of it, uh, very modern feeling. At some points it did feel like it was very very dark but part of it might have been the costuming so um that was kind of annoying but i was like overall the movie was well done so it's easy to overlook things like that so if you haven't seen star trek nemesis or it's low on your list i definitely recommend giving it a watch because it is a better movie than you might remember i know it was definitely i mean part of me is biased like 10 percent that I had good memories of it, but because I can't remember why, it's hard to keep with that great of a good movie, but having watched it now, I can say it was very well done, especially with that relationship conversation between Picard and Shinzon that um, you get that comparison and uh, Picard telling him that he can be a better person and Shinzon saying that he can't. So, And then also to the point where you can see how Tom Hardy was picked to be, I want to say he was the Bane in the um, Christopher Nolan Batman film, so you can actually see why he was picked for that role because it actually fits him very perfectly. For that being said, or with that being said, uh, let's move into the other show that I'm currently watching and that's Fear the Walking Dead. So I did have a chance to watch episode or season 8 episode 3 Odessa and episode 4 King County. So I actually didn't make notes of what of what Odessa specifically was about, but these two episodes actually were a whole lot better than the first two episodes of the season to the point where they were very well done, or they were very well done, but um, I actually enjoyed the points, the plot points moving forward, learning about um, what happened to, um, or who Padre was, and we learned that it's those kids' father, but he's actually been dead and it actually turns out that the kids were running the show and they were bringing kids in to um, protect them from their families and also the outside world. So it's better if the kids don't know what's going on and basically building their own weird, not weird, but their own like zombie cult kind of thing. Whereas their dad wanted to do the, wanted to do the opposite and seed all these different communities, help them grow and be, rebuild that trade and, um, society basically so for me odessa worked because of all that stuff with kim dickens his character finding out all about all of that and generally just that whole plot point that they couldn't do anything better but and so what padre was doing is an alternative but they're still kidnapping kids so it's not like they're doing a they're doing good things for the wrong reasons or in the worst possible way kind of thing so I like that they're start, they were acknowledging all of that stuff and having kind of like that forced dialogue to talk about it. Uh, with King County we have um, Morgan's character going back home to deal with his son. So I was listening to the Talking Dead podcast and it was I got, it got me thinking about how, something they were talking about how um, how many times or maybe it was a listener providing feedback but it was on the episode but and it got me thinking about how many times can we have morgan's character going back and forth to deal with his sadness finally having enough or someone bringing him out of his haze of being pissed off and then um going back to help other people but this episode actually 
was one of those things where we realized that while he still is struggling with um, not being able to put his wife out of his misery, learning that his son Dwayne also became a zombie and not being able to, um, I, hate, I hate saying put him down, but take him out of his misery of being a zombie, that ultimately Morgan is dealing with having to do this to his wife and son. It's not something easy to do and we can see why he left and left them there to love Dwayne tied up in the attic that um, he didn't he couldn't deal with it and it's better if he's not there and he's outside of the space of where of the community that he lived in so if he can put it in the back of his mind and not have to confront it then he's better off but to that point he also we can also see why he wants to finally not have to deal with that because he's it's continuing continuously holding him back and he wants to be able to protect his wife protect mo and ha be able to do that without ha a guilty conscience or anything uh, weighing him down in the back of his mind and we get to deal with that we learned that um his wife that morgan's wife ultimately got in the house and was a reason for why Dwayne became a zombie it upset morgan so much that he ultimately tied him up into the attic of his house and left and that's what kind of what why he was in that um haze and stupor that he was in when rick finds him and dealing with that all and all of that sort of stuff being doing the whole thing with clear and all of that so i'm actually glad that we were able to or that morgan was able to resolve it now but i also like that callback to season one with rick and the rifle uh, rick helping him out the stuff with wayne um, and the stories and basically all that Walking Dead season one and two I want to say retrospective that it kind of makes it gives us that connection between the shows where um, we can see that it, Morgan really hasn't gotten over it and it's something that you don't get over easily so even though it's all these years it's still in the back of his mind weighing him down and no matter what he does it still haunts him so he wants to finally be done with it, get it over with, and focus truly on the future and protecting his new family. So overall, a good two episodes, so I'm curious to see how the next couple of episodes play out as we head into the mid-season finale and um, deal with that sort of stuff. So I'm hoping that the stories continues to continue to be as good as these two episodes, so we'll see how that goes. And then something I learned also while I think I saw an article, but also it was a good refresher on the Talking Dead podcast that I guess on the same day as the mid-season finale for Fear the Walking Dead, we're going to get the premiere for um, The Walking Dead, um, Dead City, I think it's called, the show, the spin-off show with um, Lauren Cohan and uh, Negan. So they're those two char the two characters on that show, I guess that we're going to get that season premiere, so I will be watching that as well. Um, same thing as always, I don't know if I'll be doing a full review for the whole like episode by episode review, but um, I'll definitely do that premiere and then see how it goes from there. So with that being said, as far as just random other updates, so in the, on the Memorial Day, we day or Memorial Day weekend um, time off that we had in the United States, my family and I decided to have an impromptu vacation to Santa Barbara for the weekend, just hang out, relax go to the beach and you know do some shopping and just hang basically hang out it's nearby it's easy to get to come home and just have some relaxing time off so I got to thinking that since we're heading to Santa Barbara I would take a few pictures and stuff like that and see how much psych true the TV show actually honors the visuals of Santa Barbara does it look very similar um, can I kind of point out the frames of references of various things? And I want to say they actually do a pretty good job. So when you are, um, you know, for example, on Stern's Wharf and you're looking back towards downtown, it does kind of have that look and feel of the boardwalk from Psych. Granted, there's not as many shops or anything like that, but when you're in certain areas, you can see how um, it works out. But on the flip side though, um, State Street is probably the biggest street for all the shopping and restaurants and things like that. So even if you change your perspective a little bit, when Gus and Sean, for example, are walking up and down the boardwalk, instead of that being on the actual boardwalk, they could potentially be on uh, State Street, for example. 
And then things like the architecture have a very old Spanish style feel to it, which should carry over very nicely. And then when you're, you know, in the um, marina wharf area with all the boats and stuff, you do get that kind of uh, feeling and visuals like you, you're in the um, Bay Area for um, from our site where Sean's dad has his boat being kept and all of that stuff. So I think they did a very good job. Granted, most of Psych was actually filmed for the most part in Canada, but for the visuals of it, it does its purpose. They're very, very similar. So um, definitely worth it. So if you do have, you know, a weekend to spare, you want to go, you know, take three or four days off, Santa Barbara is a great place to go. You don't really need too much time because, you know, if you get there in the morning, you have a day for shopping. You have another day to wander around. Their electric bicycle and tour system is very good. I definitely recommend um, going on the bicycle tour around the city so you get to see things like the mission. Um, I think the police station, city hall, no, not city hall, but the various places in downtown, they take you, you know, up and down the boardwalk and stuff like that. So definitely worth it. Um, if you're not able to have that mobility for riding a bike or maybe you're older and age or just unable to walk that much to be able to get around town like that, I recommend the duck boat tour. So they take you around town on this boat and they take you out into the harbor for a little bit so you get a view back on the city. So that's also a way to go. Uh, one of the things we didn't do this time around was the boat tour out to the Channel Islands. Um, because we did that before, we didn't. the weather was overcast, so we didn't really feel like going out there, you know, in the cold and wind and all that. But if you do happen to go during a time, you know, in summer or when it's sunny and clear, I recommend that tour because they take you out to the Channel Islands. You get to see the various rock formations in the water and the caves and things like that. So that's always a good time and good thing to do. So um, that's basically all I wanted to talk about there. I recommend the food and the shopping, the bike thing and that boat thing. So all in all, it really only take you only really need you know a couple of days, two to three days maybe to account for driving time. That's why I say three to four days. But you know if you kind of want to relax, um, if you're staying you know at the I think there's a Hilton or a Hyatt on the board off the boardwalk, you can stay at. So depending on how much you want to do, there's enough to do. Um, if you want to do, more, you know, some of the hiking and stuff like that, you would need more time for that as well. But if you're going to do that instead of the, instead of the boat tours or the um, biking or stuff like that, it can be manageable. So just something to plan out with depending on where everything is at. So Santa Barbara is a good place to go for the weekend. Um, I'll have a link in the show notes to the photos I took so you guys can check out some of that in a video as well. Um, supposedly the flower, the super flower bloom thing is a big thing in uh, Santa Barbara and the neighboring areas. Granted that happens more in April so well because we went in May we kind of caught the tail end of it. The flowers are starting to die off a little bit as well but if you do go in April then you get, and it happens to be a good amount of rain and uh, rain showers then April is a better time to go for that so once it rains wait you know a week or two and then go. And you can check out some of those beautiful flowers that are fields and fields of different colors and patterns and variety and things like that. But the link in the show notes will have a link to the photos I took so you can check out some of those views of Santa Barbara. Um, as far as gameplay updates, I've still been playing Assassin's Creed Origins. So um, I think I've gotten through taking out all the various heads of this mysterious organization. So now as we're approaching the final few levels of the game, I think I have like six or seven main quest items to complete before we get into the end of the game. So um, we're dealing with that. The leveling up has been good. I'm still having trouble partly because I think I'm playing on my cell phone instead of a big screen that it's sometimes hard to see the minimum level requirements for some of the different missions to go on. So I know recently I was, or this week I tried to go on a level that was for level I think 39. I think I'm at like 28 or 29, maybe even 30. But the level I should have gone on was for level 31. So, you know, and I was wondering like, why am I, why do I keep dying? Why can't I get past these guys? Why is it so hard to take these guys out? And it turns out that was the reason. It was a level 39 mission and I'm on level, for example, 30. So that's why they're getting, you know, one or two hit kills on me. So um, 
I skipped that mission. I went to the mission I should have gone on. So you'll see that um, gameplay update in the um, on the playlist on YouTube. So uh, keep checking those out if you're interested. But yeah, so far so good. But we're approaching the end game for Assassin's Creed Origins. So I'm really curious to see how it ends. Um, to that note, though, um, overall Xbox Game Pass Game Pass works pretty well. 90% of the time I don't have any issues but every so often it does feel like there's a lot of lag and it's not like you know I've been playing for 10 minutes and suddenly there's lag but it just starts right off the bat, bat with all of that. Um, I know it's not my internet connection I have or I want to say part of the reason is my internet connection because it's a 500 megabyte download but only 25 megabyte upload speed so I want to say that either a game pass has that connection issue where their servers are too loaded or because my um, internet connection is not symmetrical or something like that that's why they're not um it doesn't always play as smoothly as it should so i was thinking that once i finish assassin's creed origin that i'm gonna put the gameplay on xbox game pass on hold um until i get the new uh, to the new gigabyte internet connection that i'm waiting to have set up in my area because it's going to be symmetrical upload and download I'm kind of curious to kind of filter out to see if the internet connection is the case or if it's Xbox Game Pass is the case that that's why the internet connection is the issue. So um, so not to say it's my internet connection or Xbox Game Pass. I can't different tell between the two. I'm kind of split between who it is, so we'll see. But once I get through Assassin's Creed Origins, I'm gonna that's why I'm going to put that on hold because I'm not sure what the issue is and it feels like either at least once a week or once every other once or twice every other week i just have way too many too much uh, lagging and glitching and things like that which there were a couple of videos like that um just because i wanted to get the gameplay done and out of the way i pushed through it but i did spend a lot of time you know clearing the cache uh, rebooting my router switching dns and things like that and it didn't really seem to fix it so we'll see how that goes and then to round out round out this particular episode um, I kind of wanted to mention a tool that I was pretty impressed with that's called Bing Image Creator. So with all this talk about AI, um, I got a link from Microsoft finally to test it out where you can put in a bunch of keywords and it'll generate you know, some artwork for you and um, kind of be kind of that AI generated image um, experience. And I got to thinking, would I be able to use something like this as album artwork instead of having to take screenshots, having to figure out which um, browser I need to be in, uh, some places I can take a screenshot, some places I can't, finding the YouTube version of the scene I'm looking at to take that screenshot. So in or for this week's um, podcast episode artwork, the image was created entirely from the being image creator. and. It used keywords from the various topics I talked about this week. So, you know, things like Star Trek Deep Space Nine, The Walking Dead, Zombie, Egypt, Assassin's Creed. And I just said, here you go, here's some keywords and tell me what you present. I got the image that you see. So I thought I'd use that instead. So for the next little while, I'm gonna keep trying to do that each week where I put in different keywords, pick the image that I like and use that for the um, episodes artwork as an AI generated image creator so it'll have various elements from the things I'm talking about that week but not necessarily screenshots from those shows so you'll see things like in the artwork of you know the statues and desert for um, Egypt you have a kind of space look and feel with the wormhole from Deep Space Nine you have palm trees for Psyche and the beach community and stuff like that so um, all in all, it seems like a it seems like a pretty cool and powerful tool. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the regular podcast episodes. As far as one-offs and things like that, I haven't decided yet. But the plan is to maybe try and see if I come up with anything. If not, then I'll use another image. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback or anything like that. You can comment on this post by visiting any of the social media sites on, I'm on at headphonesneal.reviews. All the active links are, support, are listed there. The website also has subscription links, support to prior or um, links to or all the prior episodes, subscription links, ways to support the show and all of that good stuff. 
And of course, if you want early access to the show um, and an ad-free version of the show, you can support it on Patreon at patreon.com slash.